think um, the current language that's being used by much of the dominant Western mainstream media just reproduces uh, the Orientalist structures that have been out there for, um, for centuries in European self-identification and in the positioning of Europe and so-called white, in quotation marks, civilized uh, world uh, as opposed to the rest of the world. Now, of course, um, in, we've seen several um, mainstream Western European American media using terms such as civilized, uh, middle class, uh, privileged, and so on to refer to the refugees who were uh, crossing from Ukraine into neighboring Western countries, oftentimes showing some sort of surprise that what's taking place did not take place in Afghanistan or Iraq. And uh, this pretty much shows again that there's this idea, this Orientalist idea that war and chaos and destruction is something that takes place outside of Europe's borders. Now, of course, um, it's interesting to see that there has been war in Europe continuously, not only both Second World Wars that emerged in Europe, but also centuries of colonial destruction that Europe has waged against the rest of the world and the rest of the world remains the majority of the world's population that is not white, privileged, and in quotation marks, again, civilized. So it just shows again the white privilege. And again, we have to say white supremacy. White supremacy is not a, um, a phenomenon that takes place here or there. It is part and parcel of the structure of, of European dominant uh, discourse, uh, which makes it very dangerous because it naturalizes war and destruction and um, military intervention in non-white places um, and thus excludes them from, from humanity and dehumanizes people that are not white. I think it shows uh, very well the hypocrisy and again the oriental structures in Western media uh, because Palestinians have been victims of a Zionist genocidal assault for a century and the language that is being used um, in reporting on Palestine, if Palestine is even reported, uh, on is very racist. Uh, Palestinians have been dehumanized, their narratives have been excluded and Palestinians have been talked about and have been categorized uh, as terrorists and all, all sorts of insults that have been, been used by some of the same media that is now humanizing, uh, not only humanizing Ukrainian refugees, but also glorifying the resistance. Some of the Western media has glorified uh, Ukrainians who have taken arms um, as heroic uh, when they were um, fighting against the Russian troops, while at the same time, of course, um, armed resistance from the Third World, especially from Palestine and Lebanon, is more often than not generally um, dehumanized and condemned as terrorist or anti-Semitic. Um, so it's a not only a double standard, but also a continuation of this entire dehumanization and glorification of white, uh, again, quote-unquote, civilization seen in the case of Russia, there has been an anti-Russian uh, bias in much of Western mainstream media that um, you know, emerged decades ago as well, um, Iran and China or other examples. Um, so when this moment happened last week, when the uh, military situation escalated, the uh, conditions in much of Western media have already been constructed. And this, of course, um, relates to the political discourse. Uh, the European Union has directly imposed, uh, once again, new sanctions, has censored Russian media uh, in the West, oftentimes in the name of so-called freedom, um, while at the same time, of course, we can see that in other cases, when allies of the United States and the NATO uh, continue to bombard people in this region and other parts of the world, there are hardly any, um, any, any reactions. And of course, here, obviously, Western um, the po Western political elites are implicated and complicit um, in this. So again, it's a double standard um, and the, the, just the creation of images and the vision of people into humans uh, and into people who are dehumanized.